Page 76, Deep River. Now on page 76, they're introducing you to a new symbol. We haven't had any new symbols because we got most of the most common ones covered already. But the double sharp sign just looks like a little X. See, if it were a double flat, and there can be, you'd have two flat signs next to each other. But with a double sharp sign, they don't put two sharp signs next to each other. They use a little X. Well, if you look at the chords, there are the sample chords they give you for the augmented then you'll see the you have a B major chord and the B augmented chord well the you just sharp it again because in a B major chord you already have an F sharp so for the augmented we want to take it up a half step therefore we sharp it so we it's a double sharp so it's here so you'll see the little X sometimes in music and that simply means it's a double sharp you just take it up a whole step is out. On page 76 they're introducing you to a contraption called an augmented triad. Remember before they covered diminished triads, remember what a triad is. <laughs> complicated, it's complicated. A triad is a three note chord. Let's go to C major because it has all the white keys. Now we go to the one chord or the chord built on the first step of C which is the C. Duh. And it's every other note for three notes. That's a triad. I can have lots of triads. Let's just do C right now. Now we had diminished triad earlier where we took the, the top two notes and took them both down a half a step. So we had a minor third and a minor third. There. That's a diminished triad. Well, an augmented triad goes the other way, sort of. An augmented triad is built on major thirds. So the diminished triad is built on minor thirds. That's a minor third, and that's a minor third. Because a regular major triad is built on a minor third and a major third, a minor triad is. Are you keeping up? Huh? A minor triad is minor third and major third. So it's. Uh, uh, well, uh, an augmented triad is simply two major thirds. You take the top note and go up a half step. Leave the middle note where it is. So it's here. That's an augmented triad. That's what it is. You augment it, you move it up. See, on a perfect fifth, it's not major fifth, it's a perfect fifth. If you go down, you diminish it. If I go up, I augment it. And that's really what I'm doing. I'm just not changing here. That's it. Lesson over. We're all done. Let's go to Deep River. Common timer, 4-4 four, four time. Key is C major. No sharps or flats, except, of course, for the accidentals. Got to have an accidental if we're going to have an augmented triad. And we do right in the first measure. Look at that. Two C chords. And immediately here. That's an augmented triad. It leads into the four chord. Kind of nice. There's other ways of getting from a one chord to a four chord. Like you could go directly there, huh? But this is a nice way to get there. We're going to talk about the right hand though. At the beginning, fourth finger on the E. One and two and three. Notice it's tied. And then four, four and one and two. Just reach down, and then it's, there's a phrase there, so lift up. And then one, it's two, one, and to reach out for the octave, one and two and three, and then claps, thumb down. Now we're at the end of a phrase. You can lift up again and come down. I mean, you can reach over and do that, but since we're at the end of a phrase and doing this, just move down. And you do that some more. Second line of page 77. One and two. So the dotted rhythm is on beat one. It's one E and a two. One E and a two. Or I just go one and two because I'm lazy. One and two and three. Come down, second finger. Lift up against the end of a phrase. One and that A is tied there. Hang on to it. One and two and three and four. Thumb down. 
you're in this position, stay here for a while, and then in the last line, or the end of this line really, you lift up, thumb again. It's the end of a phrase, lift up. At the end, I think you can get that. Let's go down to the last two measures here. 4-1, the 3, and then come down for the B, E. I know it sounds lovely, it'll sound better later. Right now, that's it. And then for the last chord, and you notice that's a double bar line there. It's not a thin and thick bar line. The piece isn't over, hopefully, because that sounds terrible in a piece like that. So it's not over yet because there's a DS alfine there. I'll come back to that. Left hand, keep the left hand soft and out of the way. It's just harmony and a little, just a nice steady rhythm. How you figure that is up to you. You can go 5-3-2. I can go 5-4-2. You can do there 5-3-1. It's up to you on how you figure that. Get the chords, work the chords out. Make sure you can get them all nice and smooth and even as best you can. No hesitations here on these chords. Put the hands together and you're here at the beginning. Watch out in the second measure because the A, the left hand needs it on the first beat, the right hand needs it on the second beat. And we want to connect this to this, so get out of the way. Before, so be careful, they're changing harmony here. That is a D sharp, F sharp. How you figure it is up to you because you're coming from here. I can go here, it's fine. Then go on. kind of nice having quarter notes in the left hand because that can keep the beat going. It'll keep you straight because you can see which note in the right hand plays on the beat by lining them up and that helps a little I think. That sounds weird but that's it. so bad with it. it's just an E major chord. There's one thing I want to point out in the third line down second measure from the left hand here. Right that. Did you recognize that as a diminished chord? You have a minor third and a minor third. It's a diminished chord. We've had those before. Mm -hmm. Now we go back and add articulation. For the most part the only articulation to hear is the the slurs in the right hand. Keep the left hand as legato as you can. Regardless of what the right hand is doing, keep the left hand legato. Then I can point out these are ornaments, which is these arpeggiated chords, all kinds of ornaments. See the wavy lines? It's like in the left hand at the beginning, the first chord, there's finger numbers and then there's a wavy line. It's kind of crowded, but it's there. You arpeggiate the chord, or you roll the chord. There's no rhythm here, you just roll quickly. Next one is two. And only roll the chords that have wavy lines. Don't don't roll them all. It gets old quick when you roll them all. And as far as interpreting it, people don't agree. Some people will always roll it so the top note's on the beat. And here, because these four notes, the one in the right hand two, all make up one chord together. And they would roll all four chords, all four notes, as one chord. Other people will roll the first note of the chord and the right hand at the same time. 
I was taught in college that you play the bottom note of the chord on the beat unless it's at the beginning of a piece. If it's at the very beginning, it's treated like a pickup. So the melody note comes on the beat in that case. So it's here. And the beat doesn't start until I play the E. So all of this is a pickup. But all the rest of them, I would play the bottom note on the beat. So it's one, two, three, four, one. So these come together. Top of page 77, last measure. First line here. On this, because of the fermata, now we're getting kind of the beats kind of going away here because you're going to hold it for a bit. I would play all four of these notes as one chord. So I would. Here. So it's here. Here. But I'd still play the bottom note on the beat. How fast you roll that is up to you here because not all rolled chords are the same speed. Depends on the situation. It's an interpretive thing. Because of the for modern, we're getting kind of ah, wishy washy, emotional. You can slow that rolled chord down and then go on. You'll have to decide how you're going to interpret these. I mean, I could interpret them, all of them, with, with the chord in the left hand and the right hand note as one chord and roll it, all of it together. I mean, there's different ways of doing it. Maybe one time you'll play it one way and one time you'll play it another. The only problem I have in that kind of case is when a teacher or somebody comes up and says, no, that's wrong. You don't play it that way. You do it this. And I say, just go away. Because there's different opinions on how it should be played and it needs to be left up to the performer. Or if you're a student, it'll be left up to your teacher to will tell you and eventually you'll decide for yourself. Now, dynamic wise, it's gently, for the most part, it is a soft piece, but it does get loud over on page 77. And that's the right hand. That's the melody that's soft. So you keep the left hand very soft. Second line, you're soft, and now you're going to come down to a very soft. So the left hand has to be really super soft. You're almost just blowing on the keys. Now all of a sudden you're loud in the right hand. The left hand can come up to about uh, medium soft to medium loud. In there has to be contrast between the style of this beginning. over here on the second line when it takes off. See, there's no roll chords here because we're not nice and gentle here. This means business. And then at the end of the line you're going to crescendo up to a very loud. Right there. That's the climax of the piece. That's what now all of a sudden they've gone back to rolling chords again. I don't know why, but then... But don't get too carried away with the chords. And the 
very loud. The very loud's for the right hand. Here, don't go above a loud at the most, or maybe a mezzo loud, sort of loud, huh? Now come back down, soft. You're going to go from very loud to soft in one measure. Good luck. Soft, loud. I would roll all of those together, it's like at the top, and you can slow the roll down because of the fermata here. And then there's a sasura, the railroad tracks. You lift up, total silence for just a moment. This is one time where the beat doesn't go on, the beat stops, just for a moment. And then you roll, I would roll all five of these notes as one chord all the way through. And that has a fermata, and you can roll those slowly if you want. And then you do the DS. And the sign where you go back to is at the top of page 77, the second measure. You see it? So you, you go to back to there and connect the G and the E. There. Connect those. So again, you're here and then here. Fine is at the second line there. You see the thin and thick bar lines and the fine? That's where you end. Speed wise, about where I was going, I think about. Adagio is the slower side of the Marato range. It's just. It's just... Until you get over to the page 77 second line last measure. Poco più moso. You see the words in between? A little more motion means speed it up a little bit. That's all it is. You'll have to decide how much you're going to speed it up. Don't play it fast. Just speed it up a little bit. Not, not a lot. And until you get down to the bottom here. And you do the DS. Now you're back to your original speed. Then there's a retardando there in the second line, second measure. I would recommend, my opinion, that you wait for the retardando until after you've done the DS, until it, it's the very end. But if you want a retardando there the first time through, it's up to you. It's, because now you've got this contrast. I would not retard on to there the first time though. That's just me. Now we add pedal because we need to smooth it out and connect these chords in the left hand. And we like the overtones going on too. So it's overlapping pedal, but I'd still like to hear the phrasing. So let's talk about the pedal. Push the nose down first and then the pedal. And I wait until I actually play the melody note. And I'm going to overlap it. It means I'm going to play the notes first and then change the pedal. Now here it's hard to hear the phrasing because we need to connect these chords. If I lift up, so for the phrasing, I separate the chords. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to lose the phrasing. It's a give and take. It's more important to me to connect the chords than it is to hear the phrasing. So I'm going to just legato pedal this. So again, at the beginning. Now lift up, let the eighth note be by itself, no pedal. We have a problem in the first measure of the second line here. That gets really mushy, and because it's a slow piece, you've got time to hear the mush. 
you might want to pedal this every beat here. I think that's better if you pedal every beat on that measure. And then when you get to the end of the second measure here, now you can lift up. They're even showing you this is not connected in the pedaling here. It's, it's a lift up with the hands, so there's a little silence before we go on. To me it's too mushy. I don't like that. We have a problem again though in that this that's really mushy. It would be nice to change the pedal right there and get rid of some of that. The problem is we lose our bass note when we do that. I like that note to sound out for the whole measure. And if I change the pedal goes away. So so it's a give and take. Do I want that note for the whole measure or do I want to get rid of the mushiness? In this case I'm going to get rid of the note because I don't like the mushiness. So I'm going to change pedal every two beats in that. This one, they're showing every two beats here, so they, they lose that note. Of course, the harmony change they had to. for that sasura, the weight, the hold, the pause thingy. Everything comes up, total silence. You'll have to decide because there's no set time for the silence. It's a feel thing. How long do you hold? Oh, I don't know. And then you do that. And I wait until I play all the notes. Put the pedal down. And then make sure you hold that G down in the right hand. And then here, and I Change the pedal after I play the C on the, the chord, on the next chord. By holding the G down, I don't lose it when I change the pedal, is what I'm saying. Here and in here. When I play with a metronome and I get the sussur like that, I just add one beat. So I'm just going to pause for one beat. Now on the fermatas on page 77, I'm just going to add one beat to the hold the note, one extra beat on each of those. Uh, because in the left hand at the bottom, the fermata's on the quarter note. I'll hold that last one, one extra count, and then pause for a count, and then go on. Let's try this together slowly to double check the notes and the rhythms. I'll give us four counts. One, two, three, four, ready and go, and one, two, Pause. 